being here. Thanks for everyone that showed up. Excited about what the Lord's doing. Amen. If you're not excited about what God's doing, then something your, your focus is on the wrong thing. Right. right. Well, you got to be excited about what God is doing because He is pouring out His Spirit in these last days. And he is sending out a call. He's sending out a call to, to the ones that are going to accept it. And it's being poured out whether we like it or not. That's right. And we got to get on board. We got to spread the news. We got to tell people about what, what he's doing, about what, how he can change their lives. Uh, in these last days, Brother Ken, I try to, try to put on what I got on, 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 on my agenda on the whole. That way I can focus a little more on about what God's got going on. Because the plans that I make, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to do, Brother Trace. There's a lot of things that I just, you know, I really like, I'd like to do. But is that line up with what God wants me to do? Right. Is it my agenda uh, more focused toward me or is it more focused toward God? But we need to take hold of in these last days of what God is doing. We need to be excited, have expectation. That's you. You're not gonna. You'll never receive what you want in your life if you do not expect to get it. Uh, I remember at Christmas time, I expected my mom and dad to get me what I what I asked for. Or if I didn't ask for it, I just expected them to get me something. And that expectation on Christmas morning led. Hey, I got what I got. What I wanted, or either got 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 something. For Christmas, but then we have to be the same way with God. Our expectations need to be high. If you come into this play every service, if you come into a service expecting God to do something, then God is not a failure. He does not fail. Right. So if you're expecting Him to do something, He's going to do it. Amen. This morning we'll be talking about the, uh, the parable of the net. It's found in Matthew 13, 47 through 50. A little short story parable that Jesus told. The story of the net tells of how a net was dropped into the sea and caught many fish. When the net was pulled up, the fish in the net were sorted. The good fish were kept and the bad were thrown away. And I've, I've always fished with a pole. I've never casted nets. I've never really used a cast net. I, a couple times I may have tried it and I think the best thing I pulled up was a can. I was casting in the wrong place, I guess. But I had a friend of mine that his dad owned a camp down in Grand Isle, and, and uh, when everybody else would gas the boat up at the little place where they did, and everybody else had to spend a bunch of money to buy bait, he didn't. He went out there and threw that cast net, and he caught his bait. He threw it out there, and he caught all kinds of stuff. We all went with him one time, and he caught crabs and little bait fish that he pulled up in that net and it, it just caught a whole bunch of a ride of different things in that net. You had to sort through it and, and pick what you wanted to keep and and throw away the bad stuff and grass and everything else gets tied up in it. And, but but in this story the good fish were kept and the bad were thrown away. Uh, the net represents the gospel of the Lord. The sea represents the world. And the fish represent the people in the world. The net, the gospel is thrown out for all people to catch as many as possible by bringing them to Christ. Uh, God has equipped us with what we need in this life to reach people. God has, has given us, even if you don't know a whole lot about the Bible, all, it doesn't take very much searching and, and asking your pastor. And that God is equipping you with what you, you can tell somebody, look, I don't know much about the Bible, but what I do know is that you need to bring yourself to church and get in church. There is something in, in that place that you need. You might say, well, I don't talk very well. Or I don't mind. God used plenty of people in the Bible that didn't talk well. But right. when God's working through you, that's all that matters. Right. When God is the one that he, he will give you the words that you need to say and that those people need to hear. We are... We are casting out our net into this world of, of people, and, and we are pulling in people that, that, that have it come from all walks of life, people that may have went to a different type of church, a different denomination, and, and 
uh, people who may have never known about God at all. And you're going to pull in all different sorts. And, and then sometimes you might even pull in that garbage sometimes. That's just God gives you the wisdom as you, as you grow in him to be able to sort through what is good and sort through what is bad. Uh, the, the main thing is that when you can tell somebody that you're talking to that does not care about what you're saying, then, then you've tried your best when you have given that all that you can do to talk to them. Right. When they are not responding in the way that you, you feel like that they're just cutting you off, then you know you need to throw that net out for somebody else that wants to be hungry for it. The me in this story is that God offers the truth and the gospel to all humanity. He just, God doesn't just pour out himself to just a certain select few of people. God, God, he pours out the gospel. It is out there for every single person in this world. It's just whether they choose to accept it or not. Right. Of those caught in the net and accepting the invitation to know Jesus, not all are true believers. They, uh, some of them just aren't going to believe what you have to say. Some of them are just not going to, like I said, they're not going to accept what you have to say. They're set in their ways. This is the way I was raised. This is the way I was taught. You're not going to change me. Don't waste your time. No, you can you can keep keep pe pecking at them. Keep pecking at them. But there's other people out there that are hungry that want to hear about God. Yeah. Uh, you know, of those caught in that accepting invitation to know Jesus, they're not all true. Some are hypocrites. Some, I hate to say it, that, that hypocrites are real. Hypo hypocrites are, 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 I guess you'd say, Christian in the name uh, and not in the heart That's true. or the action. A hypocrite is a person that, that will play the part, and that's all they're doing is playing. God's not in here, and the actions that they, they put forth, the, the, the things that you see them do in a daily walk, it does not reflect that what you see when they come to church. The, the, the hypocrite always shines through. The, uh, they're so-called Christians. That, 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 I, that's, a, that's a fine line when somebody just, you know, he says, I, I would rather be hot or cold. Right. I would rather be hot or cold. I, I, I don't want you to be lukewarm. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I, I don't want to be that so-called Christian. Why? Because they will suffer the consequences of God's judgment and they'll be cast away. I want to be on fire for God. I want to be the type of person that, that when I sit on these pews and I do what I have to do, I come in here and I teach Sunday school, I preach when Brother Kenneth wants me to, I go to different places and preach, but also when I'm out there in that world, and I'm doing my day-to-day -day job, and I don't have to say a word to one person, and I don't have to tell them, I don't have to say, I'm a preacher, I'm this, I'm that, I'm nothing. I can keep my mouth shut, and somebody walk up to me and say, hey, there's something different about you. Right. Come on. That, that is not being a hypocrite. That is being on fire for God. Right. That is being someone that when you cast out the net, you're dragging in somebody that, that, that when they look at you, they want to hear what you have to say. You don't want to be that person that, that, that say, I heard you preach a good message Sunday, but then I saw you out there in the world. And I, did, I didn't know if that right. was you or not. Right. We have to be separate. We have to be a separate people. God's judgment will be, will be, will be brought down on, on the hypocrites. We have to know that there is no hiding our motives or what lies within our heart from God. You cannot hide anything from God. You may, you may play a part in front of people. You may, you may have the wool pulled over people's eyes. You may have them thinking that you are just the best thing. But I'm telling you here today, you will not hide what is your true intention in your heart from God. Right. Because he knows every, anyone who calls himself a Christian but is, 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 is just not sincere about what they're doing, they will suffer God's judgment. And I hate to say that, that suffer. That suffering, his judgment is hell. A lot of people don't want to preach about hell, but I'm here to tell you there is a hell. Yeah. There is a heaven, just like there is a heaven. There is a hell. Right. It right. is made for the ones that 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 when the net was cast out and they were brought in, they didn't want to hear about it. That, that when they when the net was cast out and you told them about God's God, what God can do for them, how God can change their life, they did not want to hear about it. 
I, I, I want to bring every single person that I can with me to heaven with me. But yeah. I hate to say it, there's going to be some that end up in hell. Right. I don't want to be that hypocrite that sat on a pew and then ended up in hell. I don't want to be that one that, that come to church and I took my time to get ready, come to church, fight the traffic, and, and then still sit there in a lukewarm state, hear what the man of God preaches, hear exactly what God gave him, because I believe every message that comes out of this man's mouth was given him direct from, from God himself. Because this man's not going to get up here and preach anything that would intentionally hurt you. If it does break against you, then God said you need it. That a lot of churches nowadays, a lot of people in church nowadays think that the, the preacher gets up there and he has a, 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 a spite against them. That what he preached, oh, he just knew how I was acting and he just wanted to say that just to get his feelings off. No, I, there are some that may do that, but I'm telling you, this man of God, this man of God gets his message straight from God. So if it rubbed me the wrong way, then I needed to be rubbed the wrong way. That's why I needed to find an altar. That's why he, he stresses so much after he preaches. If he preaches a message, hey, whether it hits you or not, come down here and find me a place to pray. God, whatever you said in that message, if it hit me, if there was a point in my life that, that any of that message needed to clean up, Lord, let me get it straight right here before I walk out those doors. Because I don't want to be that person that when I walk out that door, if I were to get in an accident, if something were to happen, Lord, I'd be, I would go to a devil's hell. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that hypocrite. We have to be sincere about our serving God. We have to be we have to be wholehearted about serving Him. When you witness to somebody, just don't, don't, oh, I want you to come to church. I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I call that my witness. I call that my, my telling somebody about God, oh, I'd love to see you in church Sunday. And I turn around and walk off. Do you really think that put a fire, a little fire under them to say, hey, I want to, if that was my enthusiasm about inviting them to church, then the church service might not be worth a clip. <laughs> but when you tell somebody, hey, I want you to come to church and see what we got going on. Right. When you talk to somebody, if you if you if you tell them, hey, hey, you need to come see this ball game that's about to happen this coming weekend, you know, it, it, you, you got to see what's happening. I, I don't even know what's going to happen, but I'm, it's going to be good. You, you ignite a fire under somebody. Why not be the same way about church? When you talk to somebody about coming to church, hey, you got to see what's been happening in this, in this church service. Amen. And do you know what's happening? No, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm telling you one thing. We, the last church service we had, the God, power of God has fallen. When you talk to them like that, you open their eyes. You open their ears. They begin to listen to what you have to say. They're seeing you. They're saying, hey, he is truly on fire for God. He is a true Christian. He's not a hypocrite. He's not one that just sits there on the pews and that's all he's there for was just to show up, pay his offering if he paid the offering. Lord, what are we on that for? <laughs> I'm getting off on less than bad this morning. But being sold out to God, sold out to Him 110%, that, that means that, that when you wake up in the morning, thank Him for the goodness of His mercy. When you do it throughout the day, I know it's hard at work sometimes, but, but throughout the day, those, those little moments that you have to talk to somebody about Him. Hey, I, I saw you, you know, I heard you was going through this. But you know what? I know somebody who can fix it. Hey, that's, that's casting that net out. They may, you may never know. You, you might say, that's the worst sinner. <laughs> you know, a sinner's bad. It, 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 that, that's just, that's sin. When you're sinning out in the world, that, that's just bad. But you may think, well, they're the, one of the worst sinners I've ever seen in my life. My dad told me, he said, I'd rather deal with somebody that's never known anything about God than I would somebody that's been in the church 15,000 times. Come on. I would rather deal with somebody that has never known a thing about being saved, being coming to church. Why? Because when you tend to deal with people like that and you can start from scratch, from nothing, you can build them and help God can build them into what he wants. And they have that, that I guess you would call it a carefreeness. 
They come down, and if, if you tell them to raise their arm, they're raising their arm. They don't know. If you tell them, hey, God's fixing to fill you with the Holy Ghost, they're standing there, well, I've never had it, so I want to know what that's about. That is the way we need to cast our nets, with wholeheartedness. If, if, I, I went out, if people that, that fish for a living went out there and they stood at the edge of that boat and they just chunked that net down like that, they're not catching nothing. They're, they're not going to catch anything. But I watched that, that young man I told you about, he did all kinds of spinning roonies on the top of the deck before he let that net go. And when I say it flew out in the perfect circle, landed in that water, and there was not an inch of that net that wasn't stretched out in its amount that it needed to go down. And that way when he pulled it up, he pulled up everything in its grasp. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to cast our net to the full potential of our ability. That way, whenever that net sinks in this old world, we are dragging in everybody God's going to have in that net who he wanted to have in. Right. That throw it with your full potential. That way, when you pull it in, you'll be able to discern. He'll give you the discernment of, hey, I don't really need to talk to them right now, but I see this person. He is hurt. I see this person here that needs God. So I need to talk to them with all earnesty and let them know, hey, what I've got, what God's done for me, he can do for you. There's several things that we can learn from this story. The net is cast out for all. There's not, there's not one person out in this world that, the, that God's net is not cast out for. Right. Jesus was sent to save everybody. He hung on that cross for every single soul in this world. His offer of redemption and salvation is found in the Bible and is intended for every, every, every single person. Our, our human thinking is, is, well, maybe God didn't die for them. Maybe God didn't hang on the cross for that person. No, no, that's not the way it goes. God hung on the cross for every single person yes. in this world. Amen. The purpose of the net is not to catch, it is to catch fish of all types. When you cast it out there and, and, and you, you're pulling it in and you're looking, you're like, mm, God, do you really want me to witness to this person? God said, yes, yes, I do. They've never heard of, 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 of God. They've never heard of salvation. They've never heard of church. They weren't raised like that. That's the mentality I had to get away from. Just because I was raised in church, just because my mom and daddy made me go to church at times, and then I began to grow that hunger of wanting to go to church, just because I was raised in it, everybody else wasn't raised like that. So the knowledge that I received when I was young, I had to think, and, and God let me have the thinking, hey, Everybody out there in that world don't have the thinking that you do. Everybody out there in that world are, was not raised like you. So we have to, we have to, that's why I say God gives you, I guess he gives you common sense in the spirit world. Because you have, you have to have it. You, have, you cannot go up there. There are some people that just, well, they didn't hear, they didn't hear what I had to say, so that's all. That, you know, I just, I cut them off. Who are they that? Cut somebody off from right. receiving what God has for them. Who are they to, who am I to just say, ah, oh, you're not worth reaching for anymore? God's casting that out for you how many times? Come on. Come on. Come on. God's, God's reached for you how many times? Who am I to say that God's not going to cast out a net for you anymore? Come on. Who am I to say that? I, I don't have that choice to make. That is not my that is not my decision to make. That's only God's decision. And if there is just a small, small inkering of, of, of God seeing that they can make a serve for him, he's gonna cast, make you cast that net one more time. Right. Come on. We have to we have to realize that. All Christians are gathered in God's net. Anyone willing to accept him is welcome in the net. Even if even if they 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 may reject you the first five six seven thousand times, come on. And that's where I mean it, it's easy for it to get discouraged in witnessing for God. It is. It's easy because when you witness and witness and witness, and you you spent your money to go print out tracks, and you went and handed out tracks, and you put walked in that hot parking lot. And, 
with how many tracks under how many windshield wipers and and as you're walking back from the other side of the parking lot to this side of the parking lot, people that have left, you see the track on the ground. That's easy to get discouraged. When you've talked to somebody until you're blue in the face, when you've witnessed to them until you've blew in the face, when you've thrown out the net until you've just about thrown your arm out of socket, but yet they still do not dart the doors, it's easy to get discouraged. But every now and then, God... When you throw that net out and you draw it in, that person that you witness to, you see them come through the doors. Right. If that's not a boost to somebody right there, because I, I can say, you know, I, I witnessed to them. I, I said what God gave me to say to them, but it was only God. It was I know it was only God because I knew what type of person they were. And what I said may have triggered a little something, but it wasn't what brought them in. It had to have been what God said to bring them in. Number two, God knows your heart. God knows everything and anything about us. If he, if, he, if he can know the number of hairs in my head, he actually knows us better than our own self. Right. And he don't have to spend a whole lot of time with me no more because I ain't got that many hairs in it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's nothing that you can hide from God. God knows everything about you. He knows the intents of your heart. He knows if you are that full, sold out, 110% Christian, or if you're just faking it till you make it. All right. There's no faking Christianity with God. If our hearts are not genuine, then He knows. If we are not sold out to Him, He knows. It. If we are doing it for a show, God knows. If we are doing it just to draw, just to have, have. Uh, fame in people's eyes than he knows. He knows that because there is no faking Christianity with God. There is no, if we're going through the Christian motions by going to church and saying things that make us look upstanding in the church, then, uh, that, uh, to make us look great in other people's eyes, you know, but inside you're really hollow, then God knows. If you wake up on Sunday and you go to church, you spent the time to get ready, come to church, you listened to what the man preached, but you walked out the same way, you're hollow inside. Right. On. There's an emptiness inside. Why? Because you're not sold out 110% to God. You're not, you're, you're, your whole viewpoint on, on life, it does not have the amount of God it needs in it. I, you can make a cake. I, somebody can say, go in there and make a cake. Sure. You go open up the cabinet. Where's the little Debbie box? <laughs> Where's the, what's her name? Duncan Hatton. Where's Mrs. whatever her name? Uh, the cake mix box. No, make it from scratch. You asking me to do what? Make it from scratch. Okay. Well, might need a little of this. Might a little need of that. And then it comes out in a flop. The middle sinks down, or it's not sweet enough, or it, it didn't have the right amount of everything it needed in it. I didn't know what the amount of, of, of everything that needed to be put into that to make it a cake. Our life is the same way. If it does not have the right amount of God, our life is going to be a flop. Our life is going to sink down in the middle. If our life does not have the right amount of God in it, then 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 we are not, if we're not sold out to him the amount that we need to be, then then our life is, we're, you ever see like you just fight, 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 fight all the time? You're going to fight. There's going to be battles in your life, but there are some times that you should just have a little coasting area. That's right. Yeah. But, but if, if, if God is not in, the amount of God is not in your life, then, then you, you're going to face more valleys and, and, and it's going to be back to back to back. If you're, if you're not sold out to him, if you're hollering inside, he knows. He knows. The hypocrites, uh, like we said, that, it's, that's a harsh judgment. But the good news is that we can turn to God. We can, we can have that genuine turning point in our life. Uh, he's waiting there for, with open arms. He is, he is there for us to, to make that 360. 
He, he is just, he's waiting for that. I, I've been the one that somebody had to cast the net out for. I've been the one that was out there in the pool just doing what I wanted to do, out there in the sea, just just swimming along, you know, what I what what I was taught, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I felt myself being dragged in by the net. There was somebody that had to cast that net out for me. I'm thankful for that person. I'm thankful for that one that did not get discouraged right. and was able right. to throw that net. They never stopped praying for me. They never stopped calling out my name. That is the sincerity that we need to have. God, give me the strength to be able to throw your net out one more time. I know I've thrown it out a thousand times, but give me what I need to be able to throw it out one more time because I do not want to see that person lost and dying and on their way to hell. There will be judgment. The Bible makes the existence of heaven and hell very clear. In the story of the net, Jesus reminds us that hypocritical Christians in name are only like they're not welcome to heaven. If you're just a Christian just by the name, then, then you're not welcome to heaven. This morning serves to encourage us to be honest with ourselves about the holiness of ourselves, about the, the holiness of our hearts, and make any necessary changes if we are, are, are willing to do what God wants us to do. do, do are we, are we I, I stress it, in, in this end time, we have to be sold out 100% to God. Right. I, I, I hate to say it, but if you are not doing what God wants you to do, you're not going to make it. Right. You're not going to make it. I, I say that to myself. I, I preach that to me in the mirror. Brother Brandon, if you're not doing what God wants you to do, if you're not reaching for the lost, if you're not fasting, if you're not praying, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not casting that net out, if you're not witnessing to people, you're not going to make it. I have to keep that fire lit under me. Because if I do not keep that fire lit under me, how am I going to reach somebody else? How am I going to tell them what they need to know when I'm not doing it myself? I have to keep myself, I have to be that fisherman that God wants me to be. Fishers of men. He said, he said put out your nets. You're going to be fishers of men now. Right. It's a little more important when you're fishing for those men. It's a little more important when you're reaching for souls. Because when they just literally fished, they pull it up. If you thought it was good, throw it back. If they kept it, if you didn't think it was good, throw it back. It might have been good, you should have kept it. Uh, like my boss, man, he catches one this big. He's keeping it. He eats sardines. He don't care. If he caught it, he's keeping it. Yeah, but, but when you're that fisher of men, it's important to have the amount of God in your life that way you can judge what needs to be kept and what needs to be taught. Yes. <coughs> keep throwing out your nets. If I encourage you to do anything this morning, keep throwing out your nets because God will give you that one day where everything will come full circle. That person, that, that family member you've been witnessing to for 20 years, you may see him sitting on the pew beside you. Right. That, that family member that you may feel like you're beating your head against a wall and that you've invited them to church so many times and they, you, they don't seem like they're, they're getting anything, cast that net one more time. Amen. That, you may not see the day one day when you pull it in and they're sitting right beside you. They're right. down here at the altar getting, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about. Right. That's what it's all about. Yes. Seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. See, taking somebody in. It's not about just me making it. It's not, it's not just about me making it to heaven. It's about how many people I can take with me. How many, I, I plan on going to heaven. I don't know about anybody else. I, I plan on going to heaven. But what have I done if I make it and I look back and I don't have anybody say, you know what, I witnessed them. Not, not, for, not to make myself big or anything, but hey, they're, they're here because maybe one word I said to them with the words of everybody else that cast out their head to, they're here because of that. Yes. If I make it to heaven and I don't have anybody else to bring with me, what have I done? I've got to keep casting out my net. God bless you.